So you want to know how to become an actor in film and television with no experience, no agent, no headshot, no resume. You're starting from the very beginning. What steps do you need to take? Well, we're going to talk about all of that in this video. Hello my fellow actors, welcome to the Acting Career Center, here to help you learn the skills you need to break into the film and television industry. My name is Kurt Yu, honored to be spending some time here with you today to discuss the 12 steps you need to take to start a career in film and television acting. Hey, if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel to get more videos on acting, auditioning, and career advice every week. And if you're interested in learning about the audition preparation process that I have used to help me book over 50 movies and television shows, then I've created a free audition cheat sheet that you can get from the Acting Career Center website. That link is in the description below. Okay, if you are watching this video, it means you are thinking about embarking on the journey of becoming a professional actor in film and television. As a working actor in the industry, I want to help you and point you in the right direction. Let me first tell you that this journey certainly won't be easy. In fact, you're going to find that an acting career is quite the roller coaster ride, full of highs and lows and successes and setbacks. But ask yourself this. What in life worth pursuing is ever easy? Like they say, if it were easy, everyone would do it. So if you are the type of person who believes in following a dream and beating the odds and proving naysayers wrong, then keep watching this video because we're going to talk about the 12 steps every actor needs to take to jumpstart their career. And I encourage you to watch this entire video because look, I know this is longer than the typical three minute YouTube video, but I encourage you to watch this whole thing because every single one of the 12 steps is extremely important. Step number one is to start training now. Training is the first step for every aspiring actor. Training will also be an ongoing process for the entirety of your career. I'm approaching 15 years in the industry and I still take classes all the time to sharpen my skills and to find new tools to add to my tool belt. When, when we see award-winning actors in movies and television shows, they make acting look so easy and effortless. Now, why is that? It's not because they were born with it. It's because they have decades of training under their belt. So where should we start? Well, if you're in high school, start with something available in school, like your drama club or school plays. If you're in college, look for theater classes if your college offers them. And if you're out of school and you're currently working a day job like I was when I first started, then maybe you can look for acting classes available after work hours or on your days off. This also applies if you're a student too. You can find acting studios that have classes available for teens, maybe after school. The, the point is, no matter how you find these classes, find the classes and start training now. A quick Google search for acting classes in your city should turn up some acting studios in your area. Step number two is to start building your network. Your entire career is going to be built on relationships. This whole industry is built on relationships. The, the power of your network is much more than just the people that you know. It's the people that they know and, and the people that those people know. That's why a network is so powerful. It's because it extends much further than our own personal reach. One day someone in your circle is going to hear from their network about a role that they think oh, I know who would be perfect for this, and they're going to call you up, and they're going to tell you about roles that you never knew existed. I mean, that's the power of a network, right? So make sure you start making those connections now. If you've already taken, if you've already started taking acting classes, then you've already started building your network because your teachers and your classmates are going to be some of the most important connections that you will ever make, especially early on in your career because they can start giving you advice on uh, agents and headshot photographers and all kinds of stuff. And remember that relationships are a two-way street. 
So don't invite people into your network just so you can get something from them. Be the type of person to offer to help them out in any way you can as well. So if you hear about a role that you know one of your classmates is perfect for, then tell them about it. Be the type of person that helps people out and then your network is going to be stronger for it. I'm going to tell you a story about how I was once offered a, mo a role in a feature film and I never even auditioned for that movie. How was I offered that role? Because one of the producers on the movie I had worked with in the past. Before that happened, I thought that type of thing only happened to movie stars. But no, it happened to me. And that's the power of a network. You never know when a relationship is going to pay off. Step number three is to learn how the business works. If you haven't heard anyone say it already, then let me be the first to tell you that being an actor is like running your own business. You don't want to be a one hit wonder, right? You want to have a long lasting career. So when it comes to building a successful career, you have to understand that your acting ability is only one piece of the puzzle. It's an important piece, but it is still only one piece of the puzzle. So once you learn how to manage your career, like the CEO of a company and understand how all of the pieces fit, then you're really going to understand how you fit into the industry. So where should you start to learn about the business? Well, in my opinion, the number one resource on the business of acting is this book, Self Management for Actors by Bonnie Gillespie. I know that many college acting programs have this book as required reading and for good reason. It's the most comprehensive guide to navigating the industry that I have ever read. So I will put a link to Self Management for Actors down in the description below. Step number four is to get professional headshots. Every business needs a marketing plan and an actor's most important marketing tool is their headshot. Your headshot is the first thing that anyone in the industry sees of you. So it's very important to make a good first impression. So what makes a good headshot? Well, many factors, but I'll tell you what, in my opinion, is the most important thing and that's it must look like you. So on the day of your headshot session, don't overdo your makeup. And when your headshots are done, don't Photoshop the heck out of them to the point where they don't even look human anymore. A critical mistake that an actor makes is that when you walk into the audition room and you don't look like your headshot. If I go into an audition and I don't look like this, the casting director is going to be pissed off because this is who they called in to audition, not someone who doesn't look like this. Okay. And also please, please, please go to a professional headshot photographer. Yes, it's going to cost some money. It's probably going to cost more money than you want to spend, but you have to look at it as a business investment in your career. If you cut corners here and you get headshots that look amateur, agents and casting directors are not going to take you seriously. Imagine if I were a lawyer and I gave you my business card and that business card was printed on regular flimsy computer paper and it was cut out with scissors. Would you take me seriously as a lawyer? Of course not. And that's what it's like when an actor walks in the room with a headshot that was not taken by a professional photographer. You want to be an actor? Invest in your headshot because it is your most important marketing tool. Step number five is to create your acting resume. Your acting resume will always be requested along with your headshot. If it's digital, then your headshot will be a JPEG file and your resume will be a PDF document. If they want a physical headshot and resume, then your headshot will be printed on eight by 10 photo paper and your resume will either be printed on the back or you'll print it on a separate piece of paper and staple it to the back. When you are first starting out, your resume will not have a lot of stuff on it and that's perfectly okay. We're all starting from somewhere, right? So what do you put on your resume in the beginning? Well, put all of your acting classes on there. You should tell people what you've been training. You can also put on if you've done any theater in high school or college or community theater, put those plays on your resume as well. You can also put on special skills that has a section on your resume. As you start to do more and more work, as you start to do web series or student films or independent films, 
those all start to add credits to your resume. One quick tip, background work does not go on an acting resume. So if you've been an extra in a movie, I don't care how big the movie was, I don't care if it was Avengers Endgame, that does not go on your acting resume. If you put background work on your resume, it's gonna make you look like an amateur. And again, agents and casting directors are not gonna take you seriously. So take that background work off your resume now. Step number six is to create your online casting profiles. Now that you have a professional headshot and resume, it's time to set up your online casting profiles. If you are in North America, the two most widely used casting platforms are Actors Access and Casting Networks. You can set up free accounts on both platforms and your profiles on these websites are gonna serve kind of as an online resume for other people in the industry to see. You can also browse publicly posted casting calls on each website. Now, not every city uses casting networks and actors access to the same degree. The major production cities like Los Angeles, New York, and Atlanta use them heavily. But if you live outside of North America, or if you live in a city that doesn't use these websites, then you're gonna have to find out what casting platforms are used in your location. If you're in a small market, sometimes that's just gonna be a Facebook group where they ask actors to post their headshots and resumes. My advice would be to start with your network. Ask your teachers, ask your fellow students, ask other working actors that you know where they are finding local casting calls. And one more thing, at some point, you're gonna to wanna to create an IMDB profile, but you don't need to do this right at the beginning. I would recommend that you wait until you have a few credits on there before you shell out the money for that subscription. Step number seven is to learn how to self-tape auditions. Self-taping has become an absolutely essential skill for any actor who wants to make a career out of this. What is a self-tape? Well, I think we're all familiar with how the traditional casting process works, where the actor goes into the casting director's office, we wait in a waiting room until we're called in, and then we go and audition live and in person in front of the casting director. Well, a self-taped audition is when an actor records their audition at home and then uploads it to the casting director instead of going live and in person. Here's an example of a self-taped audition that I did at home. If Janet starts throwing around reckless endangerment, criminal negligence, if she starts trying to demonstrate that you were somehow responsible in any way, even indirectly, then these types of headlines, they don't help us. We don't engage. They got this from your statement to the police. I wasn't thinking clearly that night. We, we lean on Well, her. we can't unring this bell. Fine, they can rip me to pieces. They don't get to take bites out of the kids, though. Okay, I'll do it your way. Fortunately, self-taping is not rocket science, and with a little bit of practice, you can definitely start getting good at this. I've put together a list of tools to help you start recording high quality audition videos at home. I have put a link to that list down in the description below. Step number eight is to start auditioning for indie films, student films, and theater. Now that you have training and you have a headshot and you have a resume and you know how to record your own auditions, it's time to start auditioning for real stuff. Yes, you can start auditioning for things without having an agent. Casting websites like Actors Access and Casting Networks have publicly posted casting calls that you can self-submit for. But remember to select the right region when you are submitting. So don't submit for projects in Toronto if you live in Miami. Now there are pros and cons when you're working on student films and non-union indie films, but in the beginning, the pros far outweigh the cons. Many of these projects are gonna be unpaid or very low pay, but just like in any other industry, sometimes you gotta take that unpaid internship to show the world what you are capable of. At this point in your career, you're gonna be needing audition experience and on-set experience and demo reel footage more so than anything else. And yes, audition for plays as well. Even if your ultimate goal is to work on camera, Acting in plays can be 
and invaluable experience that will serve you for the rest of your career. And there is another way to get experience without auditioning and working on other people's projects, and that's to start creating your own projects. So start creating your own web series or short films. In my acting classes, me and my friends would always create our own content. One, it's a lot of fun. Two, we're always learning something new. And three, we're creating demo reel footage that we can use for ourselves. Step number nine is to create your demo reel. Now, once you've worked on your first project, hopefully you've got some footage back that you can put onto your demo reel. Now, don't worry if your demo reel is only one short scene. That's perfectly okay. Just like with your resume, our demo reel has to start from somewhere. If you happen to have multiple scenes or you worked on multiple projects, great. You can put all of that onto your demo reel. Now, the rule of thumb is to keep your demo reel on the shorter side. So 90 seconds to two minutes long max. That's because agents and casting directors are only going to watch about that much anyway. In fact, they're probably only going to watch the first 20 to 30 seconds. So you want to lead with your best content and don't fall into the trap of thinking that your best acting is necessarily your most emotional scenes. I've seen so many demo reels start off with 30 seconds of only crying or 30 seconds of just screaming and yelling in anger. That doesn't necessarily show us that you can act. It shows us that you can cry and it shows us that you can scream. But don't underestimate the power of a scene of a simple conversation with someone. If you can listen and respond truthfully and do it in the moment and make it look real, that can be a fantastic scene for a demo reel. Step number 10 is to submit to your first agent. All right, you've probably been wondering when we were going to get to an agent. The thing is, most people will want to jump to this step right from the get go because they think that getting an agent right away is going to magically turn them into a working actor. But that's not how it works. Agents don't turn people into actors the same way hospitals don't turn people into doctors. Hospitals hire people who have already put in the work and proven themselves ready to become doctors. So by the same token, agents sign people who have already done all of the previous steps and have proven themselves to be ready for the industry. What does an agent want to see when you submit to them? Well, they want to see people who are really serious about this as their career. They want to see that you've been taking classes. They want to see that you are still currently taking classes. They want to see a professional headshot and a professional resume, and they want to see a demo reel of your abilities. And then if they like what they see, then they may invite you in to audition for representation. Now, once you do sign with your first agent, first of all, congratulations, but don't take this as an indication that you can take your foot off the gas. A fatal mistake that a lot of actors make is that as soon as they sign with an agency, they uh, sit back and relax and they think, I can just wait for my agent to call. They're going to do all the work for me now. No, that's not how it works. At the end of the day, you are still the biggest stakeholder in your career. You need to continue to train and to continue to network and to continue to update your marketing materials and to continue to submit yourself on casting websites and do all of those things because look, your agent only takes a 10% commission off of anything that you make, right? So that means 90% of the work is still on your shoulders. Step number 11 is to branch out to a bigger market. Unless you already live in one of the big production hubs like Los Angeles, New York, or Atlanta, then at some point in your career, you're probably going to consider moving to a bigger production market. This is a huge decision and should not be taken lightly. And it should not be made on a whim. I've seen too many actors move to a new city without really giving it much thought and they only found out after the fact that they just weren't prepared for the mental or the emotional or the financial struggles that they would encounter. So please do as much research as you can and make a plan before you make the jump. The next question is where should you move? And well, that's going to be a very personal question because nobody's going to be able to make that decision for you. 
I started my acting career in Cleveland, Ohio back in 2008, and in 2016, I decided to move to Atlanta instead of Los Angeles or New York. And that has turned out to be a really great decision because Atlanta has offered me incredible opportunities that I would never have dreamed of when I was in Cleveland. Now, could I still move to Los Angeles at some point in the future? Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. But at this moment, I am 100% focused on building my career here in Atlanta. Now, I've made another video about moving to Atlanta for your acting career, and I'll post a link to that video down in the description below. Step number 12 is to be patient and enjoy the journey. Yes, the process is probably gonna take a long time. It's gonna take longer than you expect, but the more that you learn to enjoy the process, the happier you will be. Trust me on that. Don't tie your happiness just to the outcomes that you're looking forward to in the future. Learn to enjoy the process. This reminds me of one of my favorite expressions. It's not about the pursuit of happiness. It's about finding happiness in the pursuit. And I think this totally rings true to the pursuit of an acting career. All right, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for sticking around all the way to the end. I hope you found this information helpful because I really do want to see success in your future. If you have any questions about any of the topics we covered, please go ahead and leave a comment down below and I will try to answer as many of your questions as I can. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel. And until next time, Keep learning, keep practicing, and I hope to see you on set one day.